Today's video got a little gameplay for you here in some in Madden Ultimate Team, rocking the three three Cub defense, and we're gonna be rocking the. Um, I think we're in the Jets playbook. We're gonna be talking a little bit about Jets offense as a whole, why it was probably the the most complete and most powerful offense of the year. Um, either that or Colts; those were kind of the two best offenses. Uh, pretty much unanimous that those are the best offenses this year. So wanted to do a video kind of highlighting that. And then also, I'm still rocking 3-3 Cub. 3-3 uh, Cub, I think, is a really, really good defense. There's a lot of things you can do from this defense uh, at this point in the year. And it's really good for the current meta because a lot of people – are running the ball. They're running the ball a lot. 3-3 three, three Cub is really good against the pass, and it's really uh, also it's very effective against the run game. So you're able to kind of stop a little bit of both with uh, with the defense. So that's a big, big, big piece of this. So we're going to be in 3-3 three, three Cub uh, defensively today, and then we're going to also be uh, talking a little bit about the – the Jets offense. So again, if you want to get any, if you want to get these full eBooks, they're in my, uh, on my school.com community page. That'll be linked in the description. That's where you get access to all of the offensive and defensive eBooks for both Madden and for NCAA or college football. Uh, that's going to be dropping here really, sh really, really soon. And we're going to be doing a ton of content over there to get you ready uh, for that. So, so, or to get you right on, on NCAA. So Super fun time right now to be a, a, a football content creator because not only do we have Madden, but now we have NCAA back. So it's going to be a lot of fun kind of breaking down both games. And we're going to be doing a full year for both. So we're not just doing college football until Madden comes out. We're going to be doing the full year of college football. This guy's already out of here. We'll get into another game. All right, boys, game number two, we are back. I'm in the Jets, and I actually get ball first. This will be a little bit more interesting. And we're talking about Bunch Strong Offset, why this is the best offense in the game. And I personally believe that Bunch Strong Offset is the best offense in Madden 24 because it's the most complete standalone formation, I meaning you could literally just run Bunch Strong Offset and you will win the major overwhelming majority of your games because the routes on the field are able to attack the entire field. This is something that I've talked about before, but also one of the other really interesting things that I think is really unique about Bunch Strong is its capability to be, to be ran both wide side and short side, meaning that there are good combos when your bunch is to the wide side of the field, and there are also good combos when your bunch is to the short side of the field. And these combos are not are also really important because they attack the entirety of the field, which is one of the most underrated tips that I could give anybody when talking about offense in Madden. You need your route combinations to attack the entirety of the field. If they do not attack the entire space, both vertical space and horizontal space of the field, they are not, you are not in a good offense, okay? And with Bunch Strong, and I've talked about this before, you need a power play. Well, it has several different power plays. It has uh, multiple options for power plays, depending on, you know, kind of the way your opponent is playing defense. You might want to establish double corner. You might want to establish Durham. You might want to establish dagger. You might want to establish even just the RPO. Like, there are four really powerful plays in Bunch Strong Offset, and when you run them together well, it makes the offense almost unstoppable. Now, the cool part is you're not just running the Jets Bunch Strong Offset. You are actually going to be running the Bunch Strong Offset, but then you can audible over to Bunch, you can audible over to Tight, you can audible over to Trips. And so one of the other things to think about that I think is really important is when and why do you audible? When and why do you audible? Why audible to Trips instead of just flip Bunch, right? Those are some questions that I think are also – uh, pretty valuable to explore for yourself offensively is understanding. And, and really, this is the biggest thing I give biggest piece of advice I could give anybody, whether it be on offensive side of the ball or defensive side of the ball is understanding the why. If you can understand why you're doing what you're doing, uh, you will instantly become 10 times better uh, because then you're going to be able to understand what actually the opponent can then do, you know, around what you're doing, right? What they can do to stop you, which then opens up all kinds of other options. These are important things to think through. Now, defensively, as I said, I'm in the nickel 3-3 Cub, and we're going to be rocking a lot of roll coverage. Uh, I think this is a really good defense. It's just basic. Essentially here, I got the left flat if the running back goes on a route. See, here he goes to the flat, so I got to go guard that. Everything else pretty much bagged up. The biggest thing defensively, and we haven't talked about this a ton, but one of the biggest tips I could give you for defense 
Number one is, of course, make everything look the same. So you want your cover, you want your max coverage defense to look exactly the same as your maximum pressure defense, right? You also want to understand how to use your user to improve your coverage, right? There I knew I did not have a middle third defender, so I rolled back into the middle of the field at the right time. Now, again, I also said that I do think it's very important to understand offensively as we get back on the offense level when and why to audible, because if you don't have a specific purpose for audibling, while it is still like it's still a good thing to audible, especially in Madden these last couple of years, because the audibling messes up the defense, you need to understand like why you're audible so that you can understand like what you're actually looking for that's going to trigger the audible, right? If he's in a base line, like for example, my opponent right now, he is in a base line. Uh, auto flip nickel three three cub so what does that mean he probably wants to run well he probably wants to run a lot of double mabel double flat which is why the double corner is going to do really good so i always want to kind of be able to attack him with that double corner concept over there so i'm going to want to run a lot more wide side against this guy because of the way that he's playing defensively now occasionally you can kind of mix in something like a dagger dagger is not going to do great um it, it does okay against double mabel but it's not going to do great against it and he's actually leaving some middle of the field coverage so because he's leaving so much middle of the field coverage one of my favorite things to do here is to audible out to this y off trio and what you can do with this y off trio is you can run a route combination that looks like this which is going to high low really well and then you'll see here, let's see if I can throw this tight in and catch it. And unfortunately, we're not able to make the catch, but you see the idea. So you can, the cool part about Jets, because it has so many formations and so many options, you can use a lot of them. Like you can use, like you'll see right here, let me show you this combo. I think this is a pretty decent red zone. Like from about the 10 yard line or so, this is a pretty decent combo. And we'll see if we can get this. See how that hitch holds that that cloud and then I just want to catch it right on the corner so what did I do right there well he's been running a lot of cover too so I just high load that left side flat that left side flat defender uh this is one of the principles that was I was uh, I learned from a coach named Drew Piscopo Drew Pisco Piscopo is one of the disciples of Mike Leach uh, rest in peace but Mike Leach my favorite coach of all time Drew Piscopo kind of learned the air raid offense from Washington State from Mike Leach himself one of the things that he kind of an observation that he said and zoomed out as he kind of looked at the offense in totality is a lot of times really what the offense is trying to do. If you look at the concepts, they are just simply creating different types of curl flat reads or isolating certain defenders and essentially making that into a high low read. This is very similar uh, to what we're doing uh, to what we're doing offensively all the time. OK, you're in Madden, you're creating a bunch of different high low reads and you're really isolating certain key defenders. Now, there is an argument to be made that you are doing the same thing on the defensive side of the ball. So like right here, he's you know, we're, we're, we're going to basically do the same thing on the defensive side of the ball in terms of how we play. And he's just not handling this blitz very well. So we're going to keep sending it. But if you think about it, what most blitzes do is they isolate a specific offensive lineman. That can be manipulated this year. It's this left side center, left side A-gap. That's kind of the main method for getting pressure. Every year there's different methods. Every year there's different, different ways to do it. I'll show you something. If he was going to go for it, he's not going to. He's going to punt it. He might fake punt it. But this is the idea. So essentially, the reason I bring that up is because what you want to try to do offensively, and I think this is something that's super helpful for me when I first heard this and first understood this, you're trying to identify – who are you isolating with what you're calling, right? Once you've figured out a good combo, so let's say it's double corner, who's the player that you are isolating? So like in this example, I'll show you. So really we're looking at what we're really, the main read here is we're looking at that outside corner. If that outside corner sits on the corner, we're going to throw the deeper corner. If the outside corner bails to the deeper corner, then we're going to throw that short corner. So you see here, as you look here, he's kind of sitting on it. So we throw the deeper corner. And you see how this works. Pre-snap, identifying who are we isolating. Let me go over another combo that's really effective. So another combo that's really effective is this Durham setup. So the main defender that we're really isolating here, there's a couple different ones, but the main one that we're really isolating in the true concept side 
is we're really looking at that left side to see, you know, who essentially that left side linebacker is really the main one that we're looking at. Uh, you could make an argument we're looking at the corner, but we're really kind of isolating that left. That, and I'm not saying to initially we're isolating that right side slot. If that right side slot goes to that wheel route, then we're going to look to the running back. So you see here, he actually blitzes. And this is actually pretty good coverage. We get late in our progression. We're able to hit that. But you see what I'm saying, how we're isolating spots. And, and, and I, it's, I hesitate to even say, like, you're isolating defenders because you are isolating defenders. But from a read perspective, if I was to teach you how to read the game, you're really reading space. You're really reading, like, where are my routes going? And, and that's going to help you get a lot faster in your reads because you're going to look to the flat area. Then you're going to look to the, you know what I mean? You're going to peak the deep zone. Is there a defender in that deep area? Yes. Okay, we're going to move on, and we're going to look to our flat. Is there a defender in the flat area? Yes. Okay. Then we're going to look to that intermediate area, and by that point, we should know one of those three options. If that's all covered, then we're looking backside at our backside concept. I personally think read progressions – whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, I personally think read progressions is like one of the hardest things in Madden to teach, uh, 100%. And this is – so another thing that – just kind of a sidebar, but in this year's game, double post is pretty much the best play in the game. And you're seeing he's continuing to call it. The problem is d double post has always – even since Madden 21, it has struggled against cover two. So you see here, see how we're high-low in that left side flat defender with that crosser and that drag route. And so we see a second we see that, that, that uh, flat space vacated, then we're just going to throw that drag every single time, 100%. So – Anyways, um, actually, you know what? We'll do one more just for fun. All right, so we're going to get the ball on offense here. I think that this guy is going to be running some man-to-man -man coverage. Also, I wanted to get your feedback. Uh, for those of you that are still watching the video this far into it, it means you're probably committed to the channel. Wanted to see if you guys wanted more ebook style content where I'm actually breaking down like good route combos, good defensive adjustments, all that stuff. Or if you wanted to see more videos like this where I'm just kind of playing a game and explaining what goes through my head and why it goes through my head. Let me know. I'm probably going to do both, but I just kind of want to know what you guys want to see more, uh, just, just for kind of my purposes of just trying to become a better creator for you. All right, so it looks like this guy is going to be in probably, I think this is Big Nickel, and I bet you he's going to be in some man-to-man. -man. So um, this is one of the things that I was talking a little bit about in the last video. If they're running man coverage, the, cor the double corner setup's not the best. So, and he actually automatically bails out of his man coverage call, which is kind of interesting. But we go to Durham. Durham is a better man beater than uh, double corner, okay? So here, I just want to show you how I read this play. So this is Dagger. What I'm doing is I'm going to peek that fade on the left side, and then I'm going to look right to the crosser and then the drag. So I'm peeking this fade, not there immediately high low end, and I can see I can throw this right in here and I can cut this off. Now, occasionally that right there happens where he's able to uh, get a KO. Oftentimes they're not actually able to get a KO there and you're able to cut this off. But it does look like he is going to go with some more zone coverage base, essentially rolling his coverage. So what I'm going to do now is go to double corners. How do I read double corner? My first read is if they're blitzing me, the best route in the game is this drag. So I'm looking at this space. I'm looking at the space in the middle of the field. Can I throw this in the middle of the field? So you see the space opens up. I can throw that right there and take my easy yardage. So again, I'm not reading. I, I just find it so important to, to teach this. I'm not reading defenders. I'm reading the space that the routes are running to. That is super important. It's so like right here, my first read is really the tight end to the running back. So I'm looking middle, no, but I say I can throw this running back right here, and we get a nice little overthrow, even though we have pocket dead eye, and the ball gets intercepted. So you see what I'm saying? It didn't work out for me, but the guy was wide open, and, and I probably could have held on it. There was a little bit of a tight window, but I probably could have held that. The guy was wide open, just got a little bit of an overthrow. What I wanted to do was just possession catch that and get my first down, but didn't work out the way I wanted it to. So no big deal. You know, you just keep playing through it. All right, so he's going to be coming out in some pistol. This is another reason why I love this defense right here. This defense is so good, and the reason – there's so many reasons why this defense is good, but one of the reasons why this is good as we get vanguarded galore here is this defense, and I showed it in another video, this defense, it's not going to stop the run. Like It's not as good of a run defense as 6-1 is, in my opinion, but this defense will stop the run 100%. So we're just going to keep 
kind of playing our game. So for example here, we're going to load up over here to try to stop the run. You know, we're not really worried about the, pre the pass um, because we want to make sure that he has to, you know, pass the ball. And there he gets a nice corner route to the sideline. And again, the first drive is always a fill-out drive. You're just kind of trying to see, especially in head-to-head, -head, like what are they doing? Why are they doing it? What are they trying to accomplish? Where do they want to throw the ball? Like those are things that we're looking at here. All right, so right here we're going to get a little aggressive, try to, try to take this way, get a sack. Nice. My, my man, Mylotta. Mylotta's a beast, budget beast. So I actually really love defending this formation with this defense right here. I think this defense is really good for this formation because the vert hooks match really well. Like, spread is just not a good formation. I don't care what anyone says. I've tried to run spread for so long. There's so many ways in which they can defend it. There really is. There's so many ways they can defend spread, and it's really not. And of course, I say that I make a bad adjustment. He gets a dot. There's so many ways to defend spread, whereas bunch, compression, and not even just that, but trips. Like, trips is better than spread. Um, and I knew he was going to run the ball, and I was right there. Oh, that kind of sucks. Yeah, it was a good, good run. I like Brandon Jacobs. Brandon Jacobs was a dog, man. When he was, when he played for the, with, uh, for the New York Giants, he was so fun to watch because he played a style of running the ball that really is just not very common anymore today. Him and Marshawn Lynch were some of my favorite running backs because they played that, just that battering ram, that big heavy back coming in. And I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna basically be stronger than you type of mentality. Well, hopefully on this next drive, we can actually have a little bit more success than we had on the last drive. So I'll start in the middle of the field. One of the things I like to tell people is generally speaking, it's best practice to call a play, call a safe play that you don't need to be hash mark dependent to call. So like Durham is a play that it really doesn't matter which it does a little bit. But it doesn't matter a ton which hash mark you're on, and it can be ran on both sides. So here, and, and because he's not showing pressure threats, I like to send five out against this. That's the same high-low read here. So I'm looking at the tight end. No, he brings that safety back down. I'm not going to risk that throw, even though it was open again, because, you know, obviously threw an interception on the last drive, so I don't want to risk it. Double corner was 100% open. I'm going to run a different variation of double corner that I think will be a little bit better for the way he's calling defense because it's now going to stress that left side flat defender even more. So you see here, see how we high load that flat defender, and then we see that that flat defender backs up just a smidge, and we're able to just take our running back. One of my favorite things to do with this formation is to run it, is to because so many people expect you to run this wide side. Every now and then I'll just flip it and run it short side and just run a basic flood combo because they almost never defend this, this little tight end route right here. So I love to just kind of, it's, it's a little wrinkle, something small. All right, so he's running a lot of roll cover three type coverage and he's not really sending a lot of pressure behind it. So I'm going to go to this wide trail play, kind of put that middle of that uh, guy in conflict there and I'm not getting what I wanted and I had terrible pocket and just got myself a sack, so... That was unfortunate. I was trying too hard to hit the bomb there. Going back to double corner here. And I'm going to have that deeper corner. See if I can catch it. Nice. I'm still rocking. Man, it's June, and I'm still – I'm just not a mutt guy. Like, I just don't really I, – I really don't enjoy mutt in the sense of I don't like building my team. It's, it's so time-consuming. I'm actually looking to, for someone to, like, do it for me that I could pay on the side, but it's so time consuming to build my team. And it, it literally to me is just the only reason you have to do it is because everybody else does it. Like I would just rather not do it, but I've actually thought about doing like more regs content too, because of that. Cause I just don't really like building my team. I just, but I, I don't know Mutt's the most competitive game mode. So you gotta, you gotta kind of be on that in my opinion. So, anyways, I just – so I'm still rocking the, the 70 out of 70 Super Bowl theme team. And that was stupid of me. I threw another pick. So, basically, what I was trying to do – so, I mean, he's running that roll cover three. He's basically running a free set, you know, the big nickel version of, of roll cover three, essentially. And, man, I'm so frustrated with myself right there. You got you to gotta not do that. Um, 
essentially I was trying to throw the crosser and I thought I could cut it off, but you can't. Uh, oh, he's going to throw the ball right back to me. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Finn. Um, what I was trying to say is you can't. Um, like, you can't cut that off in the red zone like you can in, in a regular. Like, I'll show you right here. If he's going to keep doing this. this. And really, the way he's calling defense, a post route would probably be better. And because of these stupid, because of these stupid X Factor players. All right. Well, we've had a couple failed opportunities here. So let's see if we can not fail. That was stupid. Okay, buddy. Okay. So a couple other things I was going to talk about. So. The other cool part about Jets, especially with Hot Route Master, is you could do stuff like this. Like, like people really sleep on this route combo out of Jets. Or you could do that out of Flood, too. When they start to, like, he's starting to kind of man people up on it. When they start to do that, and this is why Bunch is so good, you have, you have so many threats to basically be able to accomplish whatever it is that you're wanting to accomplish. So... I really like this. This route combo, I think, is really underrated because you can playmaker the running back or you could just run the running back on the route here. But you see how it holds that? You see how, see how much, see how well, whoa, Brady, go on the ground, buddy. So see how, see how well, I'll show you it again here. This running back route will basically hold the user and you can put him on a Texas or whatever, but oftentimes watch this user, he'll sit right there and then you could throw this kind of right in there and, and almost through another pick. Brady's kind of throwing the ball a little weird for me, not going to lie. And it's kind of driving me insane. But anyway, that, that would be something. That's kind of a hard throw to make on the way he's playing coverage. I'll throw another pick. Man, I'm, I was hoping to talk about offense, and I have played – <laughs> really bad this game on offense. I've thrown three picks in the red in, in scoring position. That's terrible. You don't want to be doing that. All right. Let's see if we can get a stop here. He hasn't really shown a whole lot. This is probably a run. I can't tackle. The one reason why you want to be off the Super Bowl theme team is because you need all these secure tacklers now. Or the way the game's played. You need you like no outsiders, secure tacklers, the that kind of stuff, just to help with this, the the, with the way the way the the game is played now. PA crossers, I'm gonna take that crosser. Oh wow, tough scene. Did not get my defense set up. This is also one. I mean, it's such an underrated tip, but guys, seriously, wait until. You have a solid 12 seconds, right? 15 seconds. So I'm thinking in my head, okay, he's an I form close. What's my defense going to be? I'm going to come out. I'm going to press. I'm going to shift to the linebacker side, right? I'm going to do all these adjustments. That is super, super important because now you see there, see, see how much faster I'm able to set up my defense when I know going into it, okay, I see what he's coming out in. More than likely, this is what I'm going to do to adjust to it. That helps so much because – when you play someone like this, it's it can be really, really difficult uh, to get your adjustments in. I'm going to try to take that out. Hey, throws right at my user. Big Chuck Halley. Chuck Halley's been a dog for me all year. So I don't know. I actually don't know what this formation is. Slot receiver backfield. But I assume it's something. Yeah. So we're going to do the same basic adjustments here. Got a screen. Get a pick six, big Warren Sap. Just put this should be a defensive video. Maybe I'll title this Y three three Cub is the best defense in the game. <laughs> look at the look at the. <laughs> I didn't even have the right nose tackle in the game. Okay, let's uh, let's actually score here. Let's see if we can actually score. So I read there automatically. I know I'm throwing the crosser. Like at this point, I already know I'm throwing the crosser. He's just getting these stupid sheds. It's ridiculous because I have secure protectors literally everywhere. So we're just going to call dagger, but instead of a crosser, we'll call post. It's a super slight thing. It makes a big difference because he'll cut faster and he'll get open a lot faster. So you see here, see how much cleaner of a throw that is? 
This is if you know what they're doing. The reason you call the crosser is because the way they stop that short post is by calling a... Um, the way they stop that, that short post is by... One second here. I'm getting bad motions and everything. That did not work out. Um, by, by calling a cloud flat that's not, 30 drop, that, that's not zone dropped. But he's not really doing that. All right, here we go. Looking for this corner route. Got the corner route, and we should be fine. There we go. Very good. All right. Now we've got to play some defense. Defense has been, has been dominating this game after the first drive. First drive looked a little rough on defense. The other thing I talk about on defense a lot, and I'm starting to just continue to become a big believer in, is, like, don't let them have the easy stuff. Make them have to throw, like, the hard throws. And to me, the hard throws, it's even what he's doing to me. Like, just by calling a base press, cover three, shaded down, you're going to take away a lot of the layup throws. And then it forces me to, to throw the crosser. It forces me to throw the corner. Well, that route takes the most amount of time to develop and provides the defense with the most amount of time to shed. So that's another reason why you would want to do that. All right, so kind of going to tendencies here. Last time he was in this formation, he called a corner route to the left. He'll probably call that here. So we're just going to sit in this. See there, corner route left. Very good. And again, you, just, you always want to recognize, like, okay, these are the tendencies of my opponent. Pretty decent. It's going to go the same now. He's going to cross her. There's a safety for you. The defense is putting the team on its back in the midst of an offensive. I can't believe I threw three interceptions. <laughs> oh, man. And all of them were, honestly, I think all of my picks really boil down to, like, bad free form or, like, bad, like, situational route combo. The running back one was the worst one. I didn't really mean to. I, I, I threw it to him, but I honestly didn't even mean to throw it to him. I was, but it didn't work out. So here we see Big Plax is going to just burn this cover three. Let's see if we can hit it. Almost. These sheds he's getting, these instant sheds, they're really good for the game because he can literally just call a, a baseline press cover three, and actually it's not terrible defense. I wonder if I block a running back, if, that's even, if, if it even matters. See, there's that short side flood combo. A lot of people don't run that uh, when they run jets. They always run wide side. But I will occasionally do something like that, you know. Another little mix-in for double corner would be to use this play call. Um, I'm just going to start rolling away from it. I thought I had running gun on Brady. Maybe I don't. Go to dagger. So, you see, normally I'd put a crosser here. But the, the, the spacing or the – it's there's not enough space to do that. So I love this setup in the red zone because I can snap throw this streak so the user's got to kind of get over there or they got to have a zone. And then if they have a zone there, they're not going to have a zone right there. And you see now we're, now we're back. Now we're back on offense, making some good plays, making some good dots, finally coming out of it. I think – and I think he gets ball at half, so – it's actually kind of a situation where I need to get a stop, but my defense has been playing so good. So I go ahead. This 3-3 Cub ebook is fully updated in the school, on the school website too. That will be linked in the description. If you want to get better at Madden, the best, you can get all my ebooks at the link in the description down below. Super good place uh, to get better. All right. Through through Cub. So he's going to this. Last time he ran this, he ran a C route. And I didn't get my adjustments. What am I doing on defense? <laughs> Dude, my abilities are not activated. My abilities are not activated. One, a defense I was going to mess with, actually, was this uh, Sam Blitz 3. This Sam Blitz 3 might be better than the, uh, than the Tampa 2, and I'll show you why. You get a different alignment. Boom. Now you can blitz that safety. All 
Uh-oh. Oh, you throw right at me. Big Cam. Pew. All right, there it is. Thanks for watching, boys. Want to get the ebooks linked in the description. Uh, 3-3 Cub, bunch strong, super good. Got a ton of other stuff over there. We'll see you guys later.